Bismillah, alhamdulillah, salatu wassalamu ala rasulillah. Our class today is about uh, the last section in chapter four, section 4.5. This section is about equations uh, that uh, involve exponential variables and logarithmic variables. After finishing this section, you will be able to solve exponential and logarithmic equations. The main tool that we have in this section indeed is the in one-to-one -one, uh, function property. You know that the exponential functions are one-to-one. -one. So if you have a to the power x equals to a to the power y, this will imply, this implies that x equals to y. Similarly for the logarithmic function, if you have two logarithmic expressions equals to each other with the same base, then the arguments also are the same. And of course, these are uh, equivalent statements. The exponential equation, it is the equation that has um, a variable in the exponent. To solve it, you need to use, as I mentioned, uh, the one-to-one -one property. So if you can have this, you can solve it. For an instant, uh, here you have five to the power x. You need here to have uh, also an expression, an exponential expression with the base five. You know that 125, it is five to the power three. So now you can apply this property directly, which implies that x equals to three. This is the solution of the equation. Uh, similarly, in part B, we have the same basis. The bases are the same and two expressions equal to each other. So we can just directly apply uh, for directly apply this uh, property. So we have the exponents equal to each other. You have a linear equation, solve it for x equals, x equals one. Of course, it is better to check your solution. If you replace x here by one, you will get a true statement. Uh, for more complicated equations, you need to follow these guidelines. Try to isolate the exponential expression alone on one side. Then you need to bring down the exponents. One, one of the best ways to do that is to take the logarithm of both, of both sides. Uh, it is also better to take the logarithm of the same base and then use the laws of logarithm to bring down the exponent, especially, of course, the product, uh, the, 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 the power rule. Finally, solve the, for the variable that you want to solve for. For example, here, we have this interesting example. Now, in fact, here, we don't have the same base. This is easy. If you have, if you have for an instant, if you have, for an instance here, three to the power n, whatever n is, uh, it will be easy to be solved because just you will use the one-to-one -one property, you will get x equals to t equals to n, and you can find n, the x. x will be just n minus two for any n, of course. But here the bases are different. Of course, one way to do that is to apply these guidelines. So one way is to, when you try to isolate the exponential expression, here it is, this is step number one, it is isolated. This is. Step number one, isolate the, the, the exponential expression. You need now to go to the second step, take the logarithm of both sides. And here you can take any logarithm. You can take log to the base 10 or ln or log to the power three. Let's see, for example, if we take log with base 10, the common logarithm of both sides for each side of uh, the equation. Then here you will apply the power property. You will bring the exponent down. So it will be equals to x plus two multiplied by log three. Now log three is a number. So you will just distribute now. You want to solve for x. So you will have x uh, uh, or you will divide. Divide by log three as it is a number. Divide both sides by log three. Now you need to solve it for x. So what you will do, you will add negative two for both sides and you will get x equals to log seven over log three minus two. This is a solution for the solution of this equation. By the way, this also can be written as what? As x equals two, by the change of base formula, this can be written as logarithm with the base three of seven minus two. This is another way to write the result. 
uh, it is also possible to 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 uh, take len of both sides. If you instead of taking the log, you can take len of both sides. And if you did that, you will get the solution in this in this form, which is also can be written in this way by using the change of wish formula. But in my opinion, I prefer this way. It is better to take the same the same base. The base here is three. So take log with base three, logarithm with base three for both sides. What is good about this, that you can use the, the cancellation property, the inverse function property to cancel the log with the, 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 the base here and you will get X plus two equals to log three of seven, just add negative seven for both sides, which is the same, the same solution. If you compare this with this, they are the same solution. And the value is the same, of course. Whatever the, the log that you will uh, use, the solution is unique. Let's take another example here. We have also here, this is the exponential uh, expression. It is not completely isolated. So we will divide by eight. Now we have it isolated. We have it alone on one side. Then now you uh, need to solve for X. So you need to bring down this exponent. So to do that, you will take a logarithm of both sides or you can write it in the logarithmic form. You know that E, you need to take log E for both sides. Log E is len. So you will take len of both sides. Then uh, the expressions by the, by the one to one property, the, ex the arguments are the same since the, the, we have the same log. So the arguments are the same and we will get e to the power two x, len will be canceled with e and you will have two x equals to len 2.5 divided by two, you will get x equals to len 2.5 over two. This is of course the exact solution. This is usually what we will ask you to do. If you uh, are in a chemistry course or a physics course, you may uh, think about uh, using a calculator to find this approximately but it will not be exact. It will be approximate solution using calculator. Similarly here, the, uh, the, 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 ex, the exponential expression is isolated on one side. So all what you need to do is to take len of both sides. Now by using the cancellation property, len with E will be canceled and you will have three minus two X equals to len four. You need to solve it for X. It is linear equation you will add a negative three for both sides. You will divide by negative two. And here we are. This is the exact value of X. Now, when we have exponential equation that is uh, of quadratic type, if you notice here, we have the exponential expression in two terms. It is not alone in one side. We need to, uh, to isolate it at the end, but it is not just about moving or adding uh, terms to isolate the, the exponential term. Here, if you look, you have something here and you have here something squared. So this is what I call the quadratic sense. You should have this sense when you have something and you have something squared, uh, especially when you have three terms. So here we have three terms. So it is a trinomial. It is natural to think about the um, quadratic equation. For example, if you remember this, this is the, the quadratic equation. So when you have something and the square of this thing, you should think about it. Indeed here, e to the power two x, it is just e to the power x all squared. So you can call this w and this is w squared, or this is u, this is u squared. You can of course uh, then uh, use the, uh, factoring, you can factor it as a trinomial. This is if you still prefer to use the, the substitution, you can use it, why not? Now you need to uh, look after two numbers, the product of them is negative six, the difference between them is negative one, they are negative three and two. And then W, it is e to the power x. Now you have two factors, the product of them is zero, so one of them must be zero of, or both of them. So this means that the exponential of X is equals to three or the exponential of X equals to negative two. This is a, now an equation that you need to solve it for X. To solve it for X, write it in the, in the logarithmic form or take len of both sides. If you take len of both sides, len will be, you have e to the power X equals three. If you take len of both sides, 
e will be canceled with ln and you'll have x equals to ln three. For the next equation, for the second equation, for this one, indeed, if you take ln of both sides, what will happen? Of course, you cannot, you are not allowed to do that, but if you take ln of both sides, this is undefined. Ln negative two is undefined. As we know, uh, logarithms are defined only for positive numbers. If the argument inside the logarithm is zero or negative, it is undefined. Indeed, before taking, before taking the ln of both sides, you should realize that this equation has no solution. This equation has no solution because of what? Because the exponential we have studied before, not only e to the power x, a to the power x for any a greater than zero and not one, we know that this is always positive. Remember that the range of the exponential function is from zero to infinity. So it is always positive for any, for any x, for all x values, this, this is always positive. So it is impossible to be negative. This is the justification if you are asked about the reason why it has no solution. So indeed we have only one solution, which is len, len three. Here also we have an equation that contained an exponential uh, expression. Uh, to solve this, let me start with, uh, with a, a common mistake that many students uh, do when they solve such equation. For example, here, you may notice that you have here e to the power x and here you have e to the power x. You have here x squared and here you have x. So some students, they may divide both sides by what? by e to the power x some of by the way to make it more clear some of you they may they may say let me write it this way i will write it as a three x e to the power x equals to negative x squared e to the power x it is okay this is this is true now divide both sides by x e to the power x what do you think is it correct what will happen if we did if we did that this will be cancelled this will be cancelled this will be cancelled and here we will have three and here we'll have uh, negative x, so x is negative three. So we have one solution. And if you check, negative three is a solution indeed. If you bought in a set of x negative three, you will get a solution. This will be negative nine e to the power negative nine plus nine e to the power negative. It is zero. It is correct. What is wrong with this? That we. Uh, lost one solution. There is another solution that we didn't find. When we apply this method, we have missed another solution, which is zero. X equals zero is a solution. So what is wrong what we did that we divided by an expression that it might be zero. We divided by X. X might be zero. So X equal to zero, it might be a solution. But it, it wasn't a problem when we divide by e to the power x. It's okay if you divide by e to the power x because e to the power x cannot be zero. And never ever it is zero. So to avoid this uh, error or to avoid um, missing any solution, it is better to not divide by expression that contain the variable that might be zero. The best way instead of dividing, take, take x, as a common factor between x and x squared and take the exponential here as a common factor. So we just take x e to the power x as a common factor, we will get three plus x. Here it is. It is just ordered in, in some way. Now you have three expressions, three, fa three factors equals to zero. The product of them is equals to zero. The product of three factors equals to zero means that one of them or all of them are zero. Uh, indeed, e to the power x cannot be zero. e to the power x never ever is zero for any x. So what is zero? In fact, x multiplied by three plus x, which implies that x is three or x is negative three. So we have two solutions for this equation, not one. And you can check, it is better to check your solution. In the case of the exponential, uh, it is so important yes, to, to know when you have to check and when it is optional to check. You must check 
if you squared both sides, you know this from math 001, you have to check, you must check if you squared both sides. Also, when we study the logarithmic equations, we must check. For the exponential, since the domain of the exponential functions uh, is all the real numbers, you have to check if you squared both sides or in some situations when you have absolute value, you have to be careful because the absolute value is a square root of X squared. So, so there is some, some kind of squaring in that case. Let's move now to the second part of this section, which is the logarithmic equations. The logarithmic equation, as it is clear from its name, it is the equation in which uh, a logarithm of the variable happening. When, you, when, occur, when, when the equation contains uh, a logarithmic variable. Again, the main tool to, to solve such equations is to use the one-to-one -one property. The logarithmic functions are one to one, so it is. Uh, they are. Uh, if you have logarithm with the same base, here just you need to think to, to be sure about that you have the same base and the single. The, the logarithm should be single. Again, let me confirm what we mean by single. Single logarithm when the coefficient here is one, not two, not three. You should have it with the coefficient one. So when you have a single logarithm with base a equals to another logarithm with the base a with different bases, with different arguments, the same basis, but different arguments, then you must have the same arguments. Again, if you have x equals to y, you, you can take log of both sides for any base, and you will get, of course, that. So they are equivalent statements. Excellent. Uh, so this is, don't forget that this is our main tool to solve logarithmic equations. For instance, to solve this one, we have three terms. We cannot apply this directly because we don't have a single logarithm equals to a single logarithm. What we should do here, we should apply the laws of logarithm here on the right-hand side. We have here the sum of two logarithms, so it will be the log of the product. So we have log, the left-hand side as it is, the log x squared plus one equals to the log of the product of x minus two times x plus three. This is the law that we use. Uh, remember that we can use this law if A capital and B capital are both positive. We cannot apply it if they are negative or zero. So what we will do now? We will apply the one-to-one -one property. You have log of an expression equals to the same log for another expression. So these two ex uh, arguments or two expressions must be the same. So this implies that x squared plus one equals to x minus two x plus three. In fact, uh, this property, it is equivalent to raising both sides to the power 10. So if you raise both sides to the power 10, 10 will be canceled with the log by the, the inverse function property. I forgot to mention this here also. This is equivalent to taking a for both sides. You will get x equals to y. But of course, it is just better to think about it in the exponential form by using the one-to-one -one property. Now, we don't have any more logarithms. It is not a logarithmic equation anymore. Just you have a quadratic equation now. Expand here the right-hand side. You have x squared plus one equals to x squared plus x minus six. You have x squared here and x squared here. They will be canceled. Then move or move negative six to here, you will get X equals to what? To seven. Now, uh, what you should do when you solve a logarithmic equation that you must, you must check your answer. Why we must check our answer in the case of logarithmic equation? Because we should make sure that the argument is positive always. If it is positive, it will be okay. Also, if you have a base, if you have a variable in the base, the base also cannot be one, cannot be neg uh, negative, cannot be zero, cannot be one. So let's check here. If you bought X equals to seven here, you will get log of 50. And here you will get log of five plus log of 10. And of course, it will be log this log five plus log 10. It is log of the product five times 10 is 50. So it is correct. It is true.
Again, as we did for exponential equations, it is better to, to follow these guidelines for solving logarithmic equations. Try to isolate the logarithmic term on one side of the equation. Of course, you need uh, to combine the logarithmic terms. If you have different terms, uh, make them with the same base, then combine them by using the laws of logarithm. In step number two, write the equation in the exponential form, uh, or in other words, raise the base to each side of the equation. Then solve the resulting equation for the variable that you want. Don't forget that you must check in the case of logarithmic equation. Let's start with this. We have ln x equals to eight, so easy equation. So to solve this equation, you need to solve it for x. So you need to get rid of the logarithm. How to get rid of the logarithm? Is it isolated? Step number one, is it isolated on one side? Yes. So now you need to write it in the exponential form. When you have log e of x equals to eight, this is equivalent to e to the power eight equals to x. Or raise e, raise both sides to the power e. So e will be canceled with lin and you will get x equals to e to the power eight. You can do it in uh, two ways. But I believe that uh, raising both sides to the power e will be of course most common. Similarly here, you can write it in the exponential form. If you write it in the exponential form, it will be equivalent to what? When you have log two of something equals to three, this means that two to the power three equals to 25 minus x. This is the exponential form. And of course, this is equivalent to saying that it is uh, 25 minus eight. Move x to here, two to the power three is here, x equals to 17. And you can, you must check your solution. Of course, here it is clear that if you bought x equals to e to the power eight, here you will get eight. Uh, another way to do this is to raise both sides to the power two. This is also by the inverse function property will get the same result. I think I mentioned it here for you that how we obtain this, how we obtain this from this, uh, we just write it uh, in the exponential form or raise two to each side. Again, uh, it is better to check if you bought seven here, it will be, of course, eight log two of eight is three, it is correct. We need here also to solve this logarithmic equation. We have a logarithmic equation, but the logarithmic term is not isolated. It is multiplied by three and added to four. So what we will do, we will try to solve for the logarithmic expression first, we will isolate it. So we will add um, or subtract four from both sides. Then we will divide by three. Now we have the logarithmic term equals to four. Now write it in the exponential form. This is 10. So it will be two X equals to 10 to the power four. In other words, we, we raise 10 to each side. So here this canceled with the log and this will be 10 to the power four. Now, you know, 10 to the power four is 10,000. If you divide by two, you will get 5,000. This is the solution. If you check, it will be true because the argument will be positive and no problem at all. Uh, another example about an equation that contains two logarithmic expressions, we need to solve it for X. So what we will do, we will combine here these two terms. Check, do you have the same base? It is, they are of course all to the base 10. So they, we have the same base. We can apply now the product law, the sum of two logarithms with the same base will be equals to the log of the product. Here we are, this is the, the, we use the law that says log A plus log B equals to log A times B. Of course, A and B both are positive. Now write it in the exponential form or raise both sides to the power 10, the same base. You will get the argument equals to 10 to the power one. Again, this is now a quadratic equation. Expand, expand this equation. Solve it for X, it is of quadratic type, factor. You have here X equals to negative four or X equals to three. Make sure here to check, you must check your answer. 
usually they will ask you about the sum of the solutions. So the sum of the solutions is not negative one. It might be. So these are in fact uh, proposed solutions. They might be solutions, but you have to check. What you need to do, you must check. Go to the original equation and put x equals to negative four. If you put x equals to negative four here, you will get negative two. And this is undefined, look. Also here, it is enough to have one, one term that is undefined. No need to continue. Just have a look. When you put x equals to negative four here, you will get negative two. So this is undefined, which means that this is not a solution. The, the expression will be defined as the solutions, not undefined. Again, check three. If you put x equals to three here, you will get five. And here you will get two. Now, if you multiply them, you will get log uh, three plus two, five plus log three minus one, it is two. If you look here, this is of course by the product law, it is log 10, which is one, which is the right hand side. It is a solution. To summarize, again, I need to write this with equivalent statement like this. Uh, what the, our, our main tool to solve uh, exponential and logarithmic equation is the one-to-one -one property. Uh, to uh, solve them, you need to isolate the exponential or the, the logarithmic term. I try to isolate it alone on one side. Uh, in the case of the exponential, take the logarithm. In the take of the, the logarithmic, take the uh, raise the base to both sides and then solve for the resulting equation. What you need to do in case of uh, logarithmic equations, you need to check, you must check, don't forget that. In the case of the exponential, it is not a must to check unless if you squared both sides or you have absolute value. Um, another important part of this section uh, is the exponential inequality. When, when we don't have equations, we have inequality. To solve them, we almost use the same tool, but with equality sign here. So a to the power x is less than a to the power y. This will happen if and only if x is less than y. This is for a greater than one. If a between zero and one, the sign of the inequality will be reversed. If it is less than, it will be greater than. And I mentioned this for you at the beginning of chapter four in 4.1, if you remember. Let's apply this for solving uh, this old exam question. Uh, this question is from section 4.1, by the way. You can go back to section 4.1 and check the another way that we used to solve this question. How to solve this? He asking about uh, the interval on which the graph is below the x, uh, the, below the line y equals three. So one way to solve is to sketch the graph, sketch the graph of uh, this function and th sketch the graph of the line y equals three. He wants you to find where it is below. So this is one way to use 4.1. Another way that I told you uh, at uh, 4.1 that we will apply when we study 4.5 is to use the meaning. What we mean by below this line. When you have the graph below this line, it means that the, the, the y, y is less than three. So this function is less than three. So we will solve this inequality. If you can solve this inequality for x, you will be able to find where the graph is below the line y equals three. Don't forget just x here, it is in the domain of the function. The domain of this function is all the real numbers. So no problems, no restrictions on x other than this. To solve this, what you will do, you will isolate the exponential, the term alone on one side. So you will, um, add negative four for both sides. It will be three minus four, negative one. Multiply both sides by negative one. You will get two to the power three minus X greater than because we multiply by a negative number. Now you have here two to the power three minus X greater than one. One is in fact, you need to write it as an expression with the same base. One, it is just two to the power zero. Now you can apply, you can apply this form and of course, it is the same. If it is greater than here, greater than here. Now, what you can do, you can just uh, apply, you can think about it like this. Apply log two of both sides. If you apply log two of both sides, 
you can have, of course, the cancellation property will tell you that three minus X is greater than two to the power zero, which is one. Or just use this property directly. So here you have two to the power something greater than two to the power zero. So this means that three minus X is greater than zero. Greater than zero should be corrected. Now it is of course a linear uh, inequality that we can solve by moving X to here. So it will be three greater than X. X is less than three. And this means that the answer is A. This is the right answer. Again, let me repeat what I did. Just you need to solve, to find where the graph is below the line, Y equals three, both the expression of the function, both this Y less than three, then solve it for X. Be careful uh, about other uh, about other uh, other restrictions on X. If you have other conditions here, we don't because the domain is all the real numbers. Again, this is algebraic solution. There is another geometrical solution that you can use. Um, you can check just section 4.1. What you need to do, you need to sketch the graph of the function and then find the intersection point between the graph and Y equals three. Try please to solve it using the graphs. In, in fact, you need to find the intersection point by solving them algebraically. Uh, uh, th this slide was about the exponential inequalities. Also, we may have logarithmic inequalities. We have a similar tool to the one that we used for uh, equations. If you have log less than log, log of x less than log of y, then x less than y and vice versa. Of course, if this is greater than, this is greater than. But if A between zero and one, this will be reversed. If it is less than, it will be greater than. If it is greater than, it will be less than. Let's apply it for this old exam question or for this recitation, by the way. Uh -huh, I remember this is a recitation exercise from section 4.3. I promised you there to solve it when we finish 4.5. The graph of this function is below the X axis on which interval? What you can do, you can solve it uh, geometrically as we did in section 4.3. Check please there. Uh, but here we can solve it algebraically. We need to find uh, where the graph is below the x-axis. Below the x-axis means that y is less than zero. So this is our y. We will put it less than, less than zero. But here you should consider the other, other conditions, other restrictions on x. x is in the domain of this function. The domain of this function is not all the real numbers. So we are not free to work with any X, no. So this means that the Y, this is the Y less than zero. And the domain of this function is what? It is a logarithmic uh, function. The domain of it is what is inside the log must be greater than zero, positive. Now to solve this uh, absolute value inequality, absolute value is always positive. So it is true for any real number. There will be a small problem at three. If X equals to three, it will be zero. Zero is not greater than zero. So the only restriction is here that X is not three. For this one, you will move one to the another side. Here we are. Log three of the absolute value is less than one. Now let me forget about this for a while. And X is not three. Now, how can you deal with this? You can write it in the exponential form. You can say that X to the power minus three, it is less than, check that this is greater than one. It's okay. This is three to the power one. This is one way, but as I mentioned, it, the best way is to use this uh, property. One, in fact, if you think about one, what is one? One is log three of three. So you have here the same log, the same log. It means that this is less than this, which is the same. In another way, in another way, raise both sides to the power three. Take three, raise it to this side and to this side. These will be canceled by the inverse function property and you will get the absolute value of X less than three. Don't forget that X cannot be three. Now this is absolute value inequality, section 1.8, math 001 which means that X minus three is between negative three and three. X is not three. Add three for both sides or for these three sides, you will get X greater than zero, less than six. But again, X cannot be three. So this means that you need to isolate. Is it here? Is three is here? It is here. 
x between 0 and 6 and x is not 3 means that the solution is uh, the answer, the right answer is D. Uh, again, uh, I think we are done with this section. What is remaining is uh, some solved exercises and there are many, so many solved exercises I bought here for you to practice. Please try to, to practice and then check the solution. Uh, there are many for exponential and logarithmic problems like look, solved exercise number 14. And also I have uh, solved uh, many old exam questions for you, but again, try to practice, try to try again and again, then check the solution. Don't read solutions. This will not be helpful for you. And next class, we will solve recitation exercises, inshallah. Thank you and see you next class.